All right. All right, well, welcome everyone. My name is Araceli Garcia and I have been a high school English teacher in my district at Hacienda La Puente for almost 25 years. I recently left the classroom and I serve now as a teacher on special assignment where I'm supporting middle school and high school English classrooms. So I decided to start a little podcast series where I'm inviting just you know, local and not so local uh, activists, uh, people who are doing great things, especially in the realm of literacy. And so I'm calling this podcast, Tell Me Your Story. I'm really curious to know, you know, what inspires people, especially, like I said, in education. So today I am so happy to have Robert Ramirez, who has started an online Brown book club. And he, he meets, you know, you, uh, they meet online pretty regularly. And he's just created this space for people to come together to share and talk about awesome books. So I'm gonna go ahead and in, have him introduce himself and tell us a little bit about, Robert, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thank you, first of all, so much for having me. It's, uh, it's always a great opportunity to be able to talk to other like-minded people and, and to you know the kids, the youth. But yeah, my name is Robert Ramirez and I'm from Denver, Colorado. Uh, I currently live here in El Paso, Texas. And yeah, I mean, I, I I just really, I just really have always loved reading it. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to start, start this book club, you know, something that, you know, it's not so conventional. People don't really uh, think about reading all the time. It's not the funnest thing to do to some people, but, but it's so, so important. So, you know, especially for Latinos and people of color, it's, uh, it's a good way to come together with, with knowledge and stories, right? Very good, very good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and share uh, this little presentation just to kind of show uh, and highlight some of the things that you've been doing and some of the things that we're seeing out there. So let me go ahead and switch over here. And so like I said, I, I call this Tell Me Your Story. And so, uh, I, you know, kind of in the uh, honor of Day of the Dead coming up and, and the importance of knowing our, our past. And I know you talk a lot about that, that it's important to know where we come from so that we know where we're going. And I think a lot of our young people don't really know that past. Um, and so we talk about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit of the why I'm doing this. And so, uh, you know, I was telling Robert that I grew up in La Puente, a working class family. My parents didn't speak English. Um, they were working class, like I said. So we didn't have a lot of access to books. Um, it really was in the classroom where I, I got to learn and to love reading. Um, and so here in the city of La Puente, you know, um, there's a lot of, lot of struggles, right? Uh, poverty, high crime rate, gang, drugs, and then the pandemic hit. And so when I was teaching, um, I had a group of seniors and they seemed so depressed because of what they were going through. Everything had locked down. They were no longer going to be able to do a lot of those fun things. And I started to think about people in my life who had also gone through a lot of struggles and yet persevered. And so I put together a little series called uh, a guest speaker series. And these are just some of the people that I invited to this uh, series here. And they were all friends of mine who went along and joined us on Zoom meetings and to share their story. So, you know, Dr. Esteban Lopez, who was national, you know, head of pediatrics in uh, Texas, who was an English learner who grew up with a lot of challenges. Uh, Russell Royball, who became the chief executive of the LGBTQ task force. Uh, in Washington, D.C., he came to visit us and tell us about his journey. Claudia Castillo, who is from El Salvador, who grew up in during the Civil War and would hear, you know, bombs going off. She became a lawyer, has her own, uh, you know, uh, uh, business. And then my own student, David Castañeda, who is uh, on the hit show, uh, The Umbrella Academy. And he was, you know, was sent to Mexico to, to study, came back, didn't know much English, but yet he has this passion. So this is where this story comes on the background of this guest speaker series. And so I decided, you know, I want to continue this and continue inviting other people who are doing amazing things. So uh, Robert has started this online book club called the Brown Book Club. And one of the questions I have for Robert is, what inspired you? When did you get this started? What were some of the successes and challenges of having an online book club? Yeah, awesome. Those are some great people that you've had on. So thanks for, uh, you know, thinking of me. So really, really, it was it was the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, during the, the pandemic where, you know, the, there was a lot of fear in the air. And then at the same time, a lot of injustice. And so to see to see the way like community could come together in a time 
uh, uh, a tumultuous time. You know, they could come together. It, it, it opened my eyes and it really inspired me. And at the same time made me think, wow, you know, the, in so many ways, the Latino and Latina community, we, uh, we have issues when it comes to, to unity, you know? And I think a lot of that's because we're so blended, right? Even the, the guest speakers you just spoke of, they all have different backgrounds, came from different upbringings. And, and that's our, our, our community is so blended and mixed that we, we can't decide, you know, we can't uh, agree. We, we don't even know what to call ourselves. Latinos, Latinas, Chicanos, Chicanos, Latinx, you know? And what better way to kind of bring people together than, than through books and stories, you know, these stories of, of the immigrant, stories of the undocumented, you know, stories of people who, who have struggled and overcame. And it's just such a good way to bring people together. And, and that's, that's really what the book club is all about. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I felt the same way. We were watching, everyone was watching on TV, these, you know, horrific images that we've known have existed. I mean, I grew up, you know, same thing, Rodney King, and that's how I got involved with the Chicano movement back in college and just wanting to do more. And I feel like our students want to do more, want to get involved with social justice movements. And, you know, how can reading be a, a vehicle to get them, you know, through that so they know the, you know, what others have done in the past. But I just want to show what some of the things that you're doing. And I, I love that you're constantly promoting uh, new books, even children books. And you're talking about, you know, even like contests and scholarships. Tell, tell me a little bit about these images here that, that we have. Sure. So uh, like everybody else, I'm always on social media. And when I, you know, I follow a lot of good people and other book clubs and other, other people with great ideas and public figures. And whenever I see something um, that can help our community, like the Latino community specifically, um, or people of color in general, I, I like to promote it. You know, I, I, the book club is all about promoting, you know, books, literacy, literacy, things for the community, culture. So, you know, that picture on the left there, that's just, just an example of someone, um, you know, a, a chance to win a little scholarship for sending in a one page essay, something like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, it's, it's really all about culture and, and promoting promoting reading, you know, at all levels. We have people that are, you know, young teens in the group all the way up to, you know, 80s, 90s. Yeah, <laughs> and all yeah, different yeah. countries and states. So, so it's awesome. awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know, one of the things that, that's so awesome or so great is that you kind of have created this routine where you give out, as we can see here, you, you tell people, hey, we're going to be reading these pages from here to here. It kind of reminds me a lot of what I would do in the classroom is like, okay, you know, by the end of this week, we're on this chapter, we're going to be talking about it, we're going to have a discussion, we're going to have a debate. And that kind of would push, you know, my students, okay, gotta be ready. Uh, but you've also hosted live uh, right, interviews with uh, authors. And one of my favorite authors is Luis Rodriguez, who is here in Los Angeles, right? At uh, the Atuchas Cafe, I believe yeah. in San Fernando. And he's always willing to be part. So tell me a little bit about things that you have hosted. Yeah, and on that one specifically, I'm you know, I'm glad he's a favorite of yours too, because, you know, I was a 13 year old kid given that book. I was, a, you know, a troubled youth also gangs and drugs. And when I got that book, it just changed my life. You know, it, it really opened the doors to B.D. Thomas down these mean streets. I mean, Malcolm X, Huey Newton, like, but that book, so he was always a personal hero of mine. So when we decided that that would be the theme uh, and that would be the book we would read, I said, you know, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach out what's the worst that can happen? He says, no. Yeah. And no, he was, he was so, so great about it. Just, just wanted to be a part of it. He, he gave us such a great uh, speech, read us some of his poetry from his old, older poetry yeah. books, newer poetry books. And man, just a, just a great person. It, it just, it was, it was a good day for the Brown Book Club. <laughs> yes, yes. I, and I hope you get to do a lot more of those. And I would love to see, you know, uh, other guests, uh, authors come in, because I think that written word is so important. And our, you know, just recently, one of our high schools hosted a um, poetry night. And it was amazing. It was two hours. There were over 40 students and the teacher had to turn away other students because there wasn't enough time who just went up and their, you know, poetry was raw. They were vulnerable. And, and so there's a, a, a desire for students to, to be heard. And, and so, you know, I keep asking, telling teachers, how are we creating spaces for our students to share what they're going through, all the struggles. And so, you know, just to, you know, kind of share what, what we're seeing out there. 
is, you know, it's not a, not a surprise. I think we kind of all have seen this, that there is a decline in students reading and yet people in general reading, not just kids, but all around. We have a distraction on our phone. We are very busy, right? We're on the go all the time. Uh, even myself, I confess, you know, I, I try to read as much as I can, pleasure reading, uh, but most of the time I have to do audiobooks because I'm on the road all the time, right? Ubering my kids and, and things like that. So, you know, one of the questions, and, and you know, I showed you this statistic here, um, you know, reading, uh, especially again, the, the joy of reading, the stamina, the habit of reading it, it is not there sometimes. So, you know, as we look at this, you could see some of the statistics there, especially look at that, our Latino youth, our, you know, Black youth, our, you know, students of color, right? And, and overall, just in general, our, our boys compared to girls, uh, what would be kind of like your tips to either teachers or students on forming habits of reading? Yeah, no, that's a, that's probably a question that we all think about a lot. You know, even in the Brown Book Club, it's, it's mostly female. And even then, out of, out of our big numbers of membership, you know, still, there's only so many people that can find the time to read, find the time to get on the Zooms and participate. Um, but, you know, as a, as a youth, it's, I think it has a lot to do with the um, identity, right? Like, they're trying to form this identity. And we all, we all are, you know, from young age to old age, we're always like reforming our identity. And I feel like reading is kind of like a life hack to, to helping you form that identity. Like if you, if you read 50 books about all these different people and all this history and all this background, that's really going to give you a, a much better feel for like who you are as a person. Right. And so when I talk to like other young people or my kids, you know, I have a nine-year-old son, I tell him, son, like you, you only have so much time on in this earth, you know, to, to explore and do things. But when you read, it's like, you're in a different world for a little bit, or you're, you're in that city. You're, you're, you're kind of uh, seeing the whole world without ever leaving your, your house, you know? So I think reading can be, uh, it just opens so many doors and imagination and, and it really helps you form your identity. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I, I was uh, sharing with you earlier is that I, as a profession, you, you drive across states you you uh, have a, you know, a truck, you're a truck driver and you're hoping to have your own truck driving business. So finding the time, it's so easy. I'm sure to just, you know, like we said, go on videos and watch silly videos or zone out in Netflix, but yet, you know, how, how did you create this habit of, of reading and finding the time? Or do you have a certain structure for, for that? Yeah. Yeah. Like anything, I think uh, it's important to schedule these things, right? Scheduling your time day, you know, uh, so I, you know, I work a lot. I work like 70 hour weeks, but every day when I stop for the, for the evening and I'm going to be done, um, I always at least try to put an hour aside for reading 30 minutes, even, even if it's just 30 minutes. And as long as I stick to that schedule, I, I find I'm just going through books like crazy. And, and I still have time for Netflix. I still have time for social media and, and my personal life. But what's 30 minutes, 45 minutes of reading? You know, it's, it's nothing. It, it goes by so fast. All right. All right. So, Robert, as we close off, um, any, you know, what are your plans? You know, what's kind of your goal for this group? And then also, please tell us, what's a book that you would recommend or an author? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so initially, this club really just started. It was going to be me and a few of my close friends, maybe 15, 20, 30 of us. And we'd like physically go meet up and no, but with the power of social media and the Internet, it can really it's already turned into thousands of people and can turn into, you know, much, much more. So I don't know, maybe a, a podcast is in the future, uh, trying to speak with more lawyer, uh, lawyers, authors and um, people of the community um, doing what you're doing, you know, trying to give a platform to to people to help inspire others. Right. That's just, that would be great. Um, but no, some that's always such a hard question. Right? What's I know. Your favorite I, know. <laughs> I hate being asked that question. <laughs> I, I, one that I just recently finished reading, and it's nonfiction, um, is by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz, the Indigenous uh, People's History, United States. So that one's that one's great. I mean, I feel like people of all ages, but specifically the youth, high school level, should should have that book under their belt. You know, before entering the real world, just kind of um, it's it's like you can't see, and then you put on your glasses, and boom, twenty twenty, and now I now I get it, and that's yeah. one of those books. That's um, awesome. Also, uh, right along with that same book would be like Eduardo Galeano's, I think I have it right here, the, the, the Open Veins of Latin America. 
Oh. That it's 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 dated, but same thing, you know, opening your eyes to to you know world politics and power and the, how 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 kind of Latinos have come to be where we are now, you know, and that's it's, it's interesting and it's important, right? And you know, and and I don't know if you're aware, but here in California, we just passed a, a, lo a law, basically a mandate to have ethnic studies as part of our graduation requirements. So our in our district, our current students, freshmen are taking ethnic studies. Some of our teachers have written the curriculum for that. Um, uh, I work with another colleague of mine who is going, they're going to elementary school so that ethnic studies is not a subject on its own, but it's, you know, embedded in all, everything that we do. That when I, we're teaching, like I had mentioned, you know, some of the novels that our students are reading right now are the same novels you know, they read when I was a student, and that was a long time ago, like 30 years ago. And it, although I love the classics, do you think there's a need to diversify uh, the canon and, and what students are reading? And, and why is that important, especially for our, our students of color, especially for our boys? So on a final note, why do you think we should we should diversify? Yeah, no, I, I think it's the world is changing, you know, and if we don't change with it, we don't adapt. and we don't make make a path for people that have never had a path, then things are going to stay the same. So, you know, people of color, Latinos, Latinas, our, our communities, in many ways, we've just been trampled on forever, never, never. And so for a state like California to to kind of lead the way in diversification and really um, giving students literature and background and history from people like them or about people like them that's so huge you know I grew up in Colorado and now very brown community mm -hmm. big time right but when I was growing up it, it wasn't so much like that still very still very white and um so I never read I, I don't think till college I ever read anything from a person of color at all and although I enjoyed the literature it, it just didn't speak to me like like bless me ultima where in New Mexico it's mandated reading yeah. or like um, something from Sandra Cisneros where wow they're speaking Spanglish and stuff like that yeah. that's how it is in my house you know that reaches out to people and that speaks to people or you know um, books from the LGBT community Q community that's that's so big for so many people right yeah. and um, yeah when people feel empowered they can do anything and that's wow. that's big that's beautiful. I think we'll end with those great words. Thank you, Robert, for taking the time. I know you have a book club meeting later today. <laughs> and so good luck with everything. I wish you the best. Keep doing what you're doing. I think it's important work. So thank you so much. And, you know, like I said, keep on reading, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Take right, care. Gracias. I'll see you. <laughs>